Hey everybody, Maria Campbell, founder of Cooks Who Care, and I'm very excited to work on a partnership with Visit East Pass Young. It's their Garden Days extravaganza, and we have some very special guests that we're going to introduce to you to show demonstrations of different products using foraged goods, local items, herbs, florals, botanicals, anything that we can prepare to get excited for spring. Now, Cooks Who Care is a well-being concierge, and we are excited excited to reveal some of these restaurants that need your support. We support restaurants, employers, operators, employees, and we want you to support them. So this is really exciting as we are here at Ember and Ash and they're upstairs where you can make reservations at any time. They're going to join us a little bit later. We have Randy, who's the chef and owner of River Twice, which has a really exciting dish that you can see a little bit right here. But we're going to show you some other things that are not just food focused, but beverage focused. We have Krista from Viva Leaf Tea. You've seen her before. We were at Yards a little ways ago, and she's gonna actually make a couple of beverages and show some extravagant things we can do with florals and make drinks. We also have Kate, who is the beverage manager at Laurel, who's gonna show us some non-alcoholic items and use her mixology to make something really creative. And then we have Ember and Ash, who's going to have their bar manager, Christian, be able to show us some interesting things and a special thing we'll show you later. But right now, I want to introduce you to Randy, who's gonna join us here, as he's gonna show us this fabulous dish. Okay, so uh, the dish we're gonna to do today, uh, it's kind of a play on a uh, surf and turf, if you will. So it's the land, it's the sea, it's the florals, it's forage goods, a little bit of everything. Um, so we call it Kevin's 10 minute ricotta which is a whole different joke in itself, and we won't go there. Uh, some spruce, some edible flowers, and some uni from Maine. Uh, we've got a small dressing here made of spruce vinegar, a little bit of yuzu, white soy, and olive oil, and everything else is really fresh. So uh, we wanted to showcase the amazing dairy that comes from Lancaster, uh, the amazing uni that we source from uh, Maine. Spruce has been foraged, local greens and flowers that are also uh, locally cultivated. So uh, it's a really simple dish. It's about the uh, accumulation of all the ingredients and not just uh, the dish itself. So, uh, shall we do it? Yeah, can you all lift right. up some of the stuff too? Sure, so uh, these are spruce tips. They've been uh, lightly pickled and dehydrated. Um, these are pea tendrils. Um, these are lilac blossoms and scarlet begonias. Uh, and this is the famous ricotta made by Kevin, the sous chef at River Twice. Uh, again, this is the uni, which we source from Maine, uh, getting close to the end of the season. Uh, we are very lucky to have a great relationship with the people who do harvest and sell it. Uh, we go through currently about six to seven, three, 300 gram trays a week. Uh, so we, uh, we use a lot of honey down there. Um, and this is our emulsion made of olive oil, uh, more spruce vinegar, a little bit of fresh yuzu juice, and white soy. So what we're going to do first is basically pipe in uh, the plate of the ricotta. Always kind of checking it first to make sure it's sexy. All right. <laughs> so that's the ricotta. We're going to provide a little base down here of the emulsion, which again, a little bit of spruce vinegar, yuzu juice, olive oil, and white soy. Then we're going to lie in our uni, which uh, we tend to. Uh, I hate to use an over-serve, but we feel when you're using ingredients that are considered luxurious, that it's always best to share them rather than hoard them. So we do um, give a pretty generous portion size when we use our caviars or our rows or our unis. So we're gonna put some here. We're gonna put some here. And put some here. This is why you go through seven a week? This is why we go through seven a week. So again, we have some pea shoots that we source from uh, Blue Moon in New Jersey. Great way to celebrate the springtime. Uh, here we have the begonias, which are a little sour this time of year. Uh, provides a beautiful petal. And uh, fresh off the, uh, the list this week were lilac flowers. Uh, which are very floral and provide an amazing sense of uh, sweetness and almost an underlying bitterness to the dish as well. 
So yeah, that's going to be our dish of Kevin's ricotta, sea urchin from Maine with lilacs, begonias, and pea tendrils. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Now, is this something you do as a special, or is this something? Uh, this dish for is season? currently on our tasting menu. So we do focus mostly on the tasting menu. It's usually seven to eight courses. Uh, it's never printed. So it's kind of one of those things where we kind of shoot from the hip every once in a while, or if guests are pescatarians or they're vegetarians, we do our best to accommodate what we can, but we don't like to really have a set outline, so it kind of uh, keeps us kind of held back. But this is currently on the tasting menu. Um, these are a second or third course. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, not available a la carte, unfortunately. How do you come up with these ideas as far as seasonality? Like, how do you become playful with something like this? Um, well, basically, we kind of work ass backwards in the sense that a lot of chefs will get to sit down at a computer or their notebook and write down all these amazing ideas of what to do with food. Um, we work backwards. We talk to our purveyors, our farmers, our ranchers, um, our suppliers, see what is the best at this moment, get them, touch them, taste them, and then decide how to you know, showcase them the best we can without manipulating them too much. So, I mean, yes, there's a little bit of a thought process as far as our, uh, our outline. Mm -hmm. We do start with like a raw and cold, go to a luxurious item, maybe a vegetable course, some sort of dumpling maybe, then a seafood, then a bird, then a beef, then a venison, something like that. Uh, but as far as inspiration, it comes from everywhere. Um, but mostly, I'd probably say 90%, it's the purveyors, the ranchers, the farmers, the fishermen. They're the ones that are writing our menu. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it's our number one job not to mess up their hard work. So that's kind of where it all comes from. I love that. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about even some of these ingredients. Like, how do I step out of my comfort zone and use something like this is spruce? Spruce. So in the springtime, it's usually one of the first things you'll see on uh, a lot of the spruce trees or evergreens. Um, it's at the end of their, their, their limb, and they, they grow out. So it's their fresh growth for the spring. Uh, they're amazing. Uh, the pine cones on this makes an amazing uh, vinegar as well. Uh, so we try to utilize what we can, and it depends on what's available and what's not available. As far as you know, foraging and you know, there's mushrooms or it's evergreens or it's wild lettuce or greens, people always ask you, how do you know? I mean, yeah. you, you just don't go out in the woods and pick stuff and eat it. I don't suggest that at all. Yeah. But, and often we'll get the question, you know, is it edible? You know, and I always say, everything's edible. You can chew and swallow. Just some things have consequences later on. <laughs> so it's, it's, not, it's not a rule of thumb to go out there and just choose things. There's a wealth of knowledge online, obviously. Mm -hmm. There's tons of books written. Um, or you can take lots of classes, too. I know during the, the pandemic, a lot of people are doing classes now mm -hmm. for foraging wild goods. Um, but that's how we go about things. And they're kind of the first thing you see in springtime. So it kind of brings this whole dish full circle. That's amazing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the restaurant? Sure. We want to support that. Right on. So the restaurant itself is located at 1601 East Pass Junk, right down the street here from uh, Emmer Nash. Uh, we are currently open for dinner service Wednesday through Sunday from 5 to 10, and we have our last reservation around 9 p.m. on Sundays. Um, we try to showcase what the Delaware River Valley has to offer. Um, we try to keep most of the proteins and vegetables within a 200 to 300 mile radius, um, and seafood, anything from the Chesapeake Bay to the Gulf of Maine. So that's kind of our realm of working with things. Um, we don't want to manipulate too much. We want to showcase the natural beauty and flavor of things, but uh, also put in a new creative or a modernist uh, touch on some things too. So um, we like to keep it funky. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's not for everyone. Um, but at the same time, we enjoy what we do, and I think it comes out on the plate for the guests to enjoy as well. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for showing all of this uh, to our guests and people who are interested in incorporating florals, botanicals. You got it all in this dish. Yeah, eat your garnish. Yeah. It's definitely a thing that people need to start doing more of. Eat your garnish. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure, I really appreciate it. it. Right <laughs> this is so exciting because we're really involving the community here for these Garden Days events. There's all different things happening all throughout the month. But Cooks Who Care wanted to support the restaurant community and people who are also involved with growing, making, engaging, eating, all the things that you love doing. Um, and we want to show you some really incredible things. So this is beautiful. Beautiful. And then I have another special guest who's going to be joining us today as well. We have more than just one thing, more than just a chef, more than just one restaurant. There are so many different facets that involve the food and beverage industry and how we can engage uh, and show you these wonderful things that people do behind the scenes.
Often you don't see it. You just see the thing grown, the the food item plated, the server coming to your table, the hostess, uh, the facility, the brick and mortar. But we don't see all the pieces, right? And all of it has an effect on how we perform, how we do. Um, and I want to show you some more stories, more people who are committed to their work. And we're so excited. Randy has his uh, wonderful items here. We'll have him walk by so he can grab his things you can see what happens behind the scenes we're natural here we're natural i do want to take one picture of this beauty and then you can take it and thank you randy oh for joining us so more in store i we are at ember and ash and recording a special garden days event with cooks who care i'm maria campbell the founder if you're joining us right now and we're so grateful to have you we have an igtv cooks who care that you can check out other amazing videos and experiences that we try to tell and uplift stories of people you may not know a lot about so Please dive in, check things out, as we have Krista, who's going to be coming with us for a moment. She was with us at Yards just a ways back earlier this year, showing us her honey and her tea mixtures. But this time, we're actually going to be able to see some of the drinks that she prepares with them. I'll tell you what, she gave me some stuff uh, the last time that we got together, and I've already shared it with a bunch of people. I dropped it off to people's houses, by the way, and I said, please enjoy this wonderful cup of tea. Um, and it's been fabulous, by the way. I try to tag you all the time when I do it. Uh, but please, yeah, bring on in. Bring on stuff over. How can I help you? This is amazing. We're excited. This is the wonderful Krista. Okay. And we got some wonderful stuff over here. Ooh. Okay. We just get set up here. We're gonna do some, uh, just some really springtime drinks. We're gonna focus on um, highlighting some of our teas and different herbs, and that you can use to create some amazing drinks. And especially as we are moving into the warmer temperatures, yes. today is a hot one. It's hot. Um, it's good. <laughs> I like to enjoy the tea that I typically drink every day over some ice. So we're gonna do that today. We have uh, a number of different herbs that I just freshly cut about an hour and a half ago. So they are really it's fresh. fresh, really, really fresh, right out of our garden. And, uh, and actually at our garden located right at Germantown and Pelham Road, right in Mount Airy, mm. uh, in front of our tea shop. So what we have today, I'm first going to start with our calm and relaxed tea as the base. That is a lavender, chamomile, and sage, which is very relaxing. That's the one I have. That's the one you have? Yes. Okay, awesome. You loved it? I loved good, it. Good, good. So we are going to start there. I had already brewed the tea. You can see our tea bags are in there. So it's already brewed. And then we also added in some of our, is that sitting right there? Uh, well, we added in some of our lavender honey. So just take my word for it, it's in there. And so that's been brewing for a little bit. And so what we're going to do <clears throat> here, we're gonna just pour it into a little shaker. I like to do this just to make sure, I don't like to have my icy over ice. I know some people do. I don't like mine to be watered down. Uh, so I just go ahead and pour it in. And then I have a little bit of ice here that was already melted, but that's okay. Let's see if I can get a couple in there. So that's lavender, chamomile, and sage, and you can go ahead and smell that. I love it. <laughs> yes, and it's all fresh. All that has been, um, all of our teas have been picked within the last, all the herbs have been picked within the last month before you receive it, so it's super fresh. All of those amazing constituents and healing properties are still uh, really great. And so we're gonna go ahead and Shake that up and make sure we don't make a mess here. <laughs> you won't make a mess. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> and I have those two glasses yep. right over there. All right, so we have these amazing fresh botanicals. The lavender, the chamomile, and sage are in there. Oop, Let's see if you can do that. <laughs> it always does this Teamwork. With pressure. <laughs> there you go. All right, and so we're just gonna go ahead and pour that over in here. And look how beautiful that color is. Oh, I absolutely love it. And I am a fan of seeing all the beautiful uh, pieces that are floating around in there. 
So the lavender chamomile and sage is um, what's been dehydrated, actually just naturally hung, naturally dehydrated, and that helps to keep a lot of the flavor. So you're not, um, mm -hmm. you don't want to dehydrate your the, your green leaves because then you lose a lot of all the healing properties that are mm -hmm. in them. So you just let them naturally hang by tying them and like hanging them upside down. But these are some fresh bouquets that I did this morning. Mm -hmm. And we have some beautiful sage blossoms. So that's what these are, these purple sage blossoms. So I love to just go ahead and, and pop them off and put them right in my drink. And you can, you know, get fancy and clip it on the edge if you like to. Um, but I just go ahead and drop them in and let them lay. And then that's the fabulousness of that drink. And you can wow your friends. <laughs> wow I'm your wild. Friends. I'm wild right now. Yeah, because um, people typically don't see sage blossoms. It's not something that's common that you typically find in a grocery store. So most of the time when you see sage, that's just it. You don't even know that they actually have their own florals. Mm -hmm. um, so they're amazing. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very strong. And uh, they taste really good as well. And you can throw them on some um, food as in, in addition to you know, using it on drinks too. Um, we're also, now we're gonna go over to our next drink, which is one of my absolute favorites. Um, the base of it is a butterfly pea flower, and we also grow these. Um, bees we have to grow inside of the greenhouse because they're used to being in very hot temperatures, um, you know, in, in countries in Asia. So we um, do that, and these you do dehydrate because they have a lot of um, moisture that stay inside of the leaf. So you want to make sure you get all of that out before you store them so you don't worry about mold or anything. Um, so we've gone ahead and we have steeped some butterfly pea flowers along with some fresh mint from the garden. And what does steep mean? Steep essentially just means you're sitting it in some hot water so that you can pull uh, the color, the nutrients, and the flavors into the actual water mm. as a medium. So that's been soaking for quite a bit now. And I um, love that color. Yes, it's, it's so beautiful. And then so people always are curious to know if it actually is all natural and i'm like oh yeah that color just came right out of the flower <laughs> we didn't do anything we didn't add anything so we're gonna go ahead and pour this right into our shaker here okay and so you can see like yeah. pulled all the color and oh, the flavor out and then we're also going to oh we're going to take some ice as we said, it's hot today. So. It is hot today, but I don't want to mix the water in there, so I'm going to pour off a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. All right, pouring off that water, adding that ice into our shaker. Great. And we're going to go ahead and recap that. So again, in there is our mint, and we also have some butterfly pea flour along with some ice that has been steeped in some water. So we're gonna go ahead and shake that, but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that natural dye, so we don't want any errors. <laughs> All right, so now we have our glass. Maria got that loose for us earlier, so we're, we're ready to go. We're gonna pour right into our glass here. And just look at that amazing, wow. beautiful color that comes out. And we're going to get to my absolute favorite part of this whole process. So That's butterfly gorgeous. pea flower uh, is, is naturally blue like this or deep purple. And what ends up happening when you add some citrus to it is my absolute favorite part. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to go ahead and dab this with some lemon juice. And we're just going to watch that transform. And as you can see, it's turning into a pinkish purple color. And I absolutely just love watching that change. What it's, we're, it's like a mood ring. It is. It's just like a mood ring. So what we're going to then do is go ahead and add a little bit of thyme. And also, again, a lot of people don't know this, but your thyme will also blossom. So we're going to add some thyme into here along with some of our thyme blossoms. I like to have them just sit on the edge. And then I also, I'm just going to add a little sprig of mint in there too. And that is your butterfly pea flower lemonade iced tea. Look at this. Look at this beautiful, beautiful creation. Absolutely. So how do you come up with your ideas? You know, it's just about putting different, um, I focus on 
the the wellness aspect of it so things that work well together so butterfly pea flower is naturally a mood booster it's really great for you in that in, in that realm and it's also like a midday work energy boost too <laughs> and mint is known for clarity and mindfulness as well so you put those two things together they're working with each other and not against each other so that's typically how i design our tea blends and the same thing for the lavender chamomile and sage they're just you know soothing herbs and all of them work together to do that very same thing mm, why don't you tell them a little bit about your company yeah so vivaly tea company is a, a earthworm brand that i designed based off of traceable origins of your food and people knowing where their food comes from because we know that's very important and us being city dwellers we don't know a lot about that mm. uh, everything is sort of just handed to us so Viva Leaf Tea is a reincarnation of also my healthcare career my past and it allows me to create wellness blends using herbs that we grow on our farm which is right here in Philadelphia and then our storefront is right at 6730 Germantown Avenue in Mount Airy. Now, are you available at farmer's markets in the area too? We are. So we do a lot of farmer's markets. Um, we're focusing on Clark Park, which is right in West Philadelphia. And then in my hometown, right at Germantown Farmer's Market, we're there every Saturday. And then Clark Park is every other Saturday. Mm, so, we got to yeah. get into South Philly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, please. Choose me. <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. Yes. I think this is so fantastic. And you also do honeys too? We do. So we have an amazing honey apiary that's really close to where we live and where our farm is located and in star apiaries and we use their amazing honey I've, I've seriously never tasted honey quite like it and we did a lot of honey tasting and uh yeah we infuse it with the botanicals that we grow on our farm and every single honey is also meant to be a, a wellness ad, uh, aid as well wow yeah. can people buy this stuff online yeah you can buy it online at www.vivaleaftea.com you can also go to your De local de bruno brothers there's about five locations that are carrying them now so go ahead and you know grab our tea and honey. That's wonderful. Well, we love what you're doing and what you're growing, which is why we wanted to incorporate Thank you into you. the garden days and just thought such a special thing. Thank you so much for being Thank with you, us. Thank you, Maria. So happy to be here. Oh, I love Krista. <laughs> she, she's a, a multi-business owner, grower. I mean, she's doing it all. But I got to tell you, this takes a labor of love. This takes so much work, you know, to prepare these things, to think of these ideas and your passions. You invest time, energy, money. It's all worth it to the individual who puts that out there. So for your support to know these businesses and get to know these identities, I think it's so important for us to know their story, what they're about how they, they want to serve the community. So I encourage you to check out her website, her products, you know, things that are happening. And we're so happy to feature her during Garden Days, which is amazing. So uh, we have some great guests. We have Kate, who's going to be joining us uh, and joining us here with us today. And uh, we're going to get ready. We're here at Ember and Ash as we're preparing and trying to switch out gears here uh, with these wonderful drinks that I, I hope you try at home and, and try to make something like this. I love how the pieces are even inside the drink. I'm a fan of that, too, where like I like to see what's in it. Um, I've had her varieties. I had the Calm uh, and Relax, the Unwind Sleep Well. Um, I even made a dessert, and I steeped yeah. it in a cream oh, yeah. and then made, um, uh, it was non-dairy, but I mean, it was delicious because of the lavender that was in there and the peony, I think. Oh, yeah, the white peony. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. Yes, I, I'm paying you attention, know, Krista. <laughs> yes. So it's so exciting to know all the different things that you can do with this. I mean, gosh, what ideas do you have, right? I hope that you want to pluck, you know, different varieties, try out different samples, see different things at farmer's markets, or, or go to places and learn how to forage. It definitely is something that you need an expert to help you understand. Um, different arboretums and different um, garden centers also can be very helpful if you're looking to like, hey, I want to start foraging. But please, we advise that you talk to an expert before you just try things as Randy from River Toys said earlier. You can eat it, but it has consequences. Believe in the same thing. We should be careful and mindful when we're trying that. 
And we did an expedition and brought Kuksu Care crew out to um, an arboretum so that we could do a trail and walk. But it was with a guided expert um, and with other individuals who are learning the craft. But it is an education form that should be tapped into with somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, so we're super excited because we're not done. We have more people to engage you with as Garden Days is just kicking up gear with Cooks Who Care. I'm Maria, and I want to introduce you to Kate, yeah. all right, who's from Laurel here. And we'll move these wonderful teas over here. Um, you are the beverage director, correct? Yes, I am. Oh, at Laurel? Laurel and the former ITV, we uh, made the decision to combine the two with bars being so constrained right now. Mm -hmm. um, using the former ITV space as an extension of our dining room. Okay. So, yeah. Lots uh, of people need to make changes and we have to do so many different things. And we're excited because we want to help share the word, what you're doing, all your energy, all your experience, and all these creations. You guys come up with creative stuff. We try our best. Uh, so with the cocktail bar closed, we wanted to still offer some sort of a cocktail option. Um, and our answer to that was a semi-batched format. So we have right now a rotation of about four drinks. Um, using bespoke ingredients, we are riffing on classic cocktails. So I have an old-fashioned variation as well as a daiquiri variation to show you today. Are you a fan of either of those? I'm a fan of both. <laughs> good. Very good to hear. How are you? How's your stir game? My stir game? Yeah. I don't know. Is it on a scale? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's, a, it's an acquired skill. <sighs> I, I believe in every skill set that you have. I don't know how my skill sets are in this. Don't worry, it's not too difficult. So, uh, we are washing bourbon with duck fat. Hmm. Have you ever had a fat washed drink? Before? No. Okay, so about three tablespoons per 750 milliliter bottle, a bottle of alcohol is all you need to change the texture completely. Get a little bit more richness, the flavor of the duck as well. We are making a uh, simple syrup in-house with fresh sage. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend trying, especially heartier herbs are excellent in a uh, simple syrup. Yeah, that's our uh, bay leaf bitters. I found those at DeBruno Bottle Shop. Shout out to them. They've been very helpful with this entire process. That's great. Um, I am not a mixologist. I'm really more a home cook with a lot of ambition. Is this something to do with crybaby pasta or is this? It's not actually. It's okay. a, they also have a fruit punch flavored bitters. Really? I still haven't figured out how to use it, but I'm working on it. Um, so we're making a double rich syrup with Demerara sugar. It's like almost like a brown or turbinado sugar, really dark flavor and infusing that, steeping it with fresh sage. My thought was what goes with duck and working from there. So adding the sage to the simple syrup, adding the bay leaf, just makes sense, they go together. Quick stir. And we're serving that in a traditional old fashioned glass. Feel free to taste, it's afternoon, totally up to you. <laughs> sip a little. Excellent. Wow. So that's for our spirit forward Manhattan or old fashioned fan. Wow. I try to keep our list uh, to encompass as many types of drinkers as possible. Uh -huh. So something boozy, something fresh. We have something spicy on the menu right now, a little tequila. Uh, just try to catch as many types of cocktail fans as we possibly can. My second cocktail, the newest, When the Ship Docks, is a take on a daiquiri. Okay. We're using fresh sorrel and white rum. Cool with plenty of lime juice. Now typically, simple syrup, white rum, and lime juice. Are you familiar with sorrel? Mm-hmm. Yep. Beautiful lemon citrusy note, as well as a really nice green herbal thing going on really adds to the complexity of what is already a very citrus forward drink. 
plus that color is just gorgeous. I think it's beautiful. Super fresh. Um, sorrel is only really in its peak season from May through June, so this is definitely going to be a limited offering. Mm -hmm. But when it starts to go better, I'll find something else to make, I'm sure. So where does your inspiration come from when you're making these ideas? I would say that my main concern is what do I want to drink? What are guests asking for that I can't yet offer them? Um, secondly, what is our kitchen talking about coming up from our foragers, from our distributors? What are they really excited about using? I want our menu beverage wise to pair so well with the food that it feels like a cohesive experience. How do people start to use more herbals and florals like in their drink making? Like you've thought of this ingredient because of its flavor profile, make a syrup out of it. Like how I do people do that? that? Trial and error. I have made far more terrible syrups than I have good syrups, but you only need one out of every 12 to work to have a program eventually. Just keep keep shutting. What are some cool things that you've tried maybe in the past that, I mean, this offers a beautiful color too. It's absolutely stunning. Right now we're doing a hibiscus syrup. We're using this uh, in kind of a last word variation. It's a lightened gin-based cocktail with lime juice, hibiscus, and elderflower. Wow. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have something sweet but not too sweet, something fruity but not too fruity, really a welcome to summer. We're actually offering that on our pairing uh, for the beverage pairing to our tasting menu right now. Wow, and so how can people, use, like you used a variety of things, so it like, how can people start to think, I wanna explore off, off a drink menu, off your drink menu. Sure. How would you tell them like to guide their way through beverages? Like maybe they wanna step out of their comfort zone. Sure, I would say take your favorite drink, isolate one component within it, and play around with it, whether that be steeping it in a spice or herb, adding a flavor to a simple syrup. I'm right now making simple syrups that are flavored with cinnamon and vanilla for my coffee. That's a great starter just to getting used to infusing sugar with different flavors. I definitely recommend trying something like that. That's awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about Laurel and the programs with the other sure. restaurants. Like, t how can people learn more about it? What should they know? So right now we are offering a six course tasting menu between uh, Wednesdays and Saturday nights, 5.45 until 8.30 is our last seating. Uh, we have outdoor seating. You can sit in Laurel, you can sit in the former ITV. We also have a chef's table available for parties of up to eight. That's seated in the back. You get to walk through the kitchen on the way to your dinner, check out everything, see behind the scenes. It's a really fun experience. Cool. How can I feel super smart about drinks I order? Like, help me. If I'm on your menu, like, how can I feel super intelligent and be like, I want to try this? I would say number one is confidence. Mm -hmm. And number two, find out what base spirit really speaks to you and then learn some of the industry terms like spirit forward. I want something boozy. Mm. I want something refreshing. That typically means you want something a little higher volume, maybe with some bubbles in it. Feel free to speak your mind and ask for what you want. Mm. Great. Wonderful. This was so nice. Thank I you so much. It. Of this course, it's my pleasure. Cool. Why don't you tell people a little bit about your background too? Because like you, you're. Are you in Philly here? I am in Philly. Uh, Philly is home. I was in New York pre-COVID, working at Gramercy Tavern for a couple of years. It was a great learning experience. Um, but while I was there, I was actually writing for a magazine called Star Chefs, and that's how I came to know. Chef Nick Elmy, and he welcomed me back home, which I'm so thankful for. Oh, this is great. Philly, South Philly, East Passyuk for Garden Days. It's Please. a family. It's a family. <laughs> it's a family. And we've stopped into Laurel Restaurant. We've done meal deliveries for our 100% committed campaign just to say thank you for all the work you guys have been doing during COVID. And we're so grateful to have you and uh, learn about this wonderful beverage program. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, this is so great. Are you inspired? I'm inspired. I want to start making some different things and two you guys also have a non-alcoholic program that's very we do absolutely well known. there's some really cool products coming out from all different bespoke brands playing on things like aperol gin there's a juniper based non-alcoholic spirit that i'm playing with right now the opportunities are really endless yeah. and we're uh we're happy to experiment great i'm so glad i wanted to mention that as well because i know some of our audience are like what about the stuff that's not and we we just love that you put so much attention to detail with it thank you so much thank you well guys we're not done we have so much more in store you can grab your thank stuff you so here much. that you need i just love these little bottles i, I wonder how many you have of these i'm a label too. addict okay I'm do you have one of those brother uh, labelers 
sometimes uh, we see these things. I think this is so fantastic and beautiful. Can you believe this? All these wonderful colors. I hope you're as inspired as we are to uh, make new things, try new stuff, experiment. Um, this is fantastic to be able to see what the community is, is making with these wonderful yeah. colors and uh, fantastic glasses, um, amazing opportunities using uh, botanicals and, you know, having fun, being a little playful sometimes is okay, you know? And like you said, Kate, like, make a mistake, who cares, right? <laughs> You'll still have a good time trying it out and failure is our, our best lesson. So um, I, I think this is such a wonderful experience to be able to learn what all these restaurants are doing. I just know it takes so much energy to do everything behind the scenes before they actually create them from concept to ideation to creation and serving you, uh, which you should check out all of the restaurants in East Pass Young for check out Laurel. Um, and their converted spaces to be able to see what kind of opportunities they have as we want to continue to support restaurants during this time as we think, gosh, this is such a great time to say, hey, we love you. We think you're amazing, right? And we have more. Can you believe that? We have more. Uh, and I want to introduce you to Christian here. Bring all your stuff with you. You can bring the whole thing and you can just unpack right from here. We'll make it easy. Thank you so much for, for joining us of today. And so as we set up here, uh, we are talking to the bar manager here at Ember and Ash, who is our host today, to be able to have us in their upstairs to video record this. We're so excited about their Garden Days event and to support restaurants and the restaurant community, which is what Cooks Who Care really cares about. So why don't you tell us first, welcome. Thank you. And what are we doing? Uh, so yeah, I am the beverage director here at Ember and Ash, um, where we try to use everything that is only ever in season um, and sourced locally as much as possible. Um, so a lot of my cocktails have homemade ingredients um, that are all just made in house from again locally sourced farms. Um, so today I'm going to be making um, one of our non-alcoholic drinks for you. Um, it's really important that we had a really cool and um, you know and a lot of intention in our non-alcoholic cocktail mm -hmm. program because uh, a lot of people don't need to have any alcohol. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just really important that um, there's the same amount of effort in our drinks um, for the non-alcoholic drinks as well as the alcohol. Wonderful. So today, um, similar to Laurel, we are also using uh, Sorrel ah. um, because it is uh, delightful and has a really nice lemony zest to it. Um, but ours is from Green Meadow Farms, which we pair, get a lot of our ingredients from. Um, and the Green Meadow Farms Sorrel, I've tried a few of them. This one is very, very lemony and has a really nice bright um, flavor profile. So I've mixed that um, in here with some uh, hay smoked celery. Mm. So we have an open wood fire hearth here and a lot of our ingredients on our dinner menu as well as the cocktail program touch that fire in some, at some point. So I just cold smoke the um, celery with some hay and then juice that. Mm. And then I'm just juicing fresh sorrel and I mix that in together with a little bit of ginger. Um, so we're going to put that in. Right. And then this is um, some wildflower honey, um, which has like a really nice, uh, very floral kind of quality to it than your standard honey. Um, and I've um, infused that with some orange blossom uh, water to give it a really nice additional floral quality. So again, there's ginger, the honey, the sorrel, and hay smoked celery juice all in here. I'm just gonna get some ice. This is so beautiful. <laughs> we just give it a quick shake just to really aerate it, but not really to dilute it too much because we really want the vegetal, like bright flavors of the juices to really shine. And then just some sparkling water on top. said everything is like we're trying to use everything so there's a lot of crossover in our cocktail program with the kitchen because the whole thing is we're trying to be 
um, snout to root. Um, so it's using the whole animal, using the whole vegetable, trying to have no waste and extracting the flavor out of everything. And so the kitchen takes things from me, I take things from the kitchen, and we really try to use everything. Um, and again, have no waste. So that here, um, we call this uh, cocktail, um, I'm, yeah, the hashtag fresh, I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> uh, so we call it the hashtag fresh, um, just a little silly name, but we don't add any citrus um, to this cocktail besides the lemon peel on top because the green metaphorum sorrel is so bright um, and citrusy itself that I didn't want to take away from that and just let that shine for itself. Um, so it's really just sh uh, showcasing the, um, the sorrel and the celery. And, yeah. It's beautiful. I love the simplicity, but then how you just steeped in the flavors with just like the dual pieces too, yeah. like, and encompassing sustainability. Why don't you talk a little bit about like, how does that inspire some of the design that you have on the menu? Like what other items do you feature as well? Yeah, so, um, so another one of my non-alcoholic cocktails um, is the Korean Spice Margarita. And the backbone of that cocktail is a barley stock. So I just um, heat up barley um, and let that steep for about an hour um, and then strain it out. And so that goes into making the backbone of the cocktail really make it, make it nice and earthy and give it a nice quality um, in place of the liquor. Um, and then the kitchen takes the barley from me and they um, infuse it with koji, uh, which is like a native yeast. And they, um, or a mole of rather fungus. And uh, so it, they use that to make koji, which then you, they use to make like so, uh, homemade soy sauce and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, so again, like, like a lot of crossover um, and just making sure we extract everything we can out of everything before. Uh, and then the rest is then composted to even further um, use everything. Cool. Yeah. How, how can people be playful if they wanted to make something on their own? That yeah. Was not so like I said, uh, this yeah. is really just showcasing really like fresh and locally sourced ingredients like the sorrel and the celery, um, just juicing them together and just really picking ingredients that sh like shine themselves and are packed with flavor because they were grown right and treated right. Um, and you know, when you choose the right ingredients, they, they speak for themselves. Um, and it's really just uh, trying new things and just, yeah, if it sounds good, it's gonna be good. Again, always go local. Yeah, can't go wrong. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Course. Where can people learn more about the restaurant? Do you know where they could go to online? Yeah, I mean, our, uh, we have our website embernashphilly.com. Um, you can follow us on Instagram. Um, we are constantly posting things about the cocktail program and the food program um, on our Instagram, and um, everything is our menu is constantly rotating um, as things go out of season and things come in season. Again, we're only using things in season, so Instagram is a great way to keep track of uh, what's going on currently in the restaurant. Thank you so much, Christian. Yeah, of course. Appreciate your time and energy to make these beautiful <laughs> creations and our host, uh, Ember and Ash, for letting us film here. We're so appreciative of being able to bring the community together during their Garden Days event that's happening all month long, by the way, <laughs> with lots of other activities. We're just one small part of that but at the end of the day i ask support local restaurants yes. support local businesses <laughs> and guess what sometimes you got to go out of your way and it's not convenient like amazon and that's okay <laughs> remember our lives before that it still was great and these business owners and operators and and staff members are just so excited to be able to serve you and come up with such creative creations and we need to support them on that right so thank you so much for joining us today and checking out what we had going on for garden days thank you visit east pass young um adam who has always been a great collaborator helped us pull some of these pieces together and allowed us to showcase east pass young community so thanks everybody peace Ciao.